Hi friends, I'm Jess and welcome to the Hex Library where today we'll be doing my wrap up for the month of May. If you're new here, I have decided to do a few more stats in my wrap up for the month. So there will be a few more things for y'all to peruse in the stats portion than just my pages read and books read. However, if you would like to skip that part, um, there's always chapters down below. So I read 12 books in May for a total of 4,633 pages. My average rating for the month of May was 3.75, which is not great, but also not terrible. I also don't believe I included my rereads or my DNFs in that total. So take that as you will. As for the length of the 12 books, seven of those that I read were novel length, two were novellas, one was a graphic novel, and two are what I call weapons, which basically just means it's a book over 500 pages. Uh, most people call that a tome. I call it a weapon. It is a weapon of a book because you could essentially kill someone. It's a giant brick. The genres that I read were seven fantasy books, two paranormal books, one contemporary, and two horror. Uh, genre wise, I when I break down like the end of the year, I have just fantasy, high fantasy, um, urban fantasy. I have all of those kind of split up, but in these just fantasy is enough for everybody, I think. And paranormal is what I consider anything that is um, not horror, but is more like witches or werewolves, um, ghosts, those type of things, which some people would consider fantasy. It's kind of under the umbrella of fantasy, but I prefer the term paranormal. So I know the difference because I read a lot of both. Um, so I like to kind of break it down. That's why I have so many fantasy categories because I read a lot of fantasy. So I like to break it down a little. The age range of those books were five adult books, five YA books, and two mid-grade books. Thus concludes the stats portion of the video. I may add in more stats later on, but I think that's where I want to start with. I'm just like slowly adding in stats because I like them, um, but it makes more work for me in editing. So until I really get a handle back on being on YouTube and figuring out how to be more consistent, eh, you know, we're just working with what we're working with. Okay. Okay. As always with my wrap up, I start at the lowest rated book, work my way up to the highest rated. I start with rereads and then DNFs and then go from there. I do have a reread this month and it is The Princess Bride by William Goldman. I read this with my friend Kate as part of our AuthorTube chat book club. I will link the live show for this in the description box down below for you if you want to know more of our full thoughts on this. We read the book and then watched the movie and compared the two um, as far as like our preferences, our dislikes, all of those fun things. If you're interested, spoiler alert, I do prefer the movie to the book, though I do love the book. This book came out in 1973, which means it's 10 years younger than my mother. Um, that means this year is its 50th anniversary. Hmm. This is the 25th anniversary edition of the book, which means this book came out 25 years ago. Interesting. Also interesting is that the movie came out in 1987, which is the year that I was born. Some tidbits for you. I do love this book. I think I gave it a four stars. I don't know. I didn't write it down because why would I do that? That would be stupid. I have one DNF for the month of May and that is Her Majesty's Royal Coven and I believe that's by Juno Dawson. Um, I read a lot of this book. I think I read around 50%. And while the book is saying a lot of really important and interesting things, I was bored, which is a weird thing to say but I was. Her Majesty's Royal Coven is set in Europe. It follows four women who were kind of important cogs in the wheel of a battle that had happened probably 15 or so years prior to the time of the book that we're in. Uh, one of the girls was is head of the coven, Her Majesty's Royal Coven, um, which is the largest coven in the world apparently. I don't know. Um, but one of the ladies is head of that coven. One of the ladies has left the coven since then. One left the coven and started her own coven. 
she's the character that ticks all of the diversity boxes in one character as someone does you know she's a person of color she's queer she doesn't want to have children you know you know how they do just throw one person in there that ticks all the boxes and then the other I honestly don't even remember about her. Um, as I said, I read 50% of the book. The girls all have very similar sounding names, um, with the exception of Neve. Um, the others' names are like Elle and Adele, and I don't, I don't know what they are, but they were, it was, they were so close to one another that I really had a hard time figuring out which girl was which, and that was part of my problem. I will say that the author is trans and one of the characters of the book is trans and the way that it's written in this universe, um, the witches are female, warlocks are male, witches have different powers than the warlocks do and this trans character has the powers that are related to their identity, not the gender that they were born with. And so it does have like some great meaning about that part of it and that was what kept me going through the 50% because I would have DNF'd it way before that had I not had that interesting bit that I wanted to see how they worked with they meaning the author how they worked with what they were putting on the book and how it affected the world that we were in uh, so I was very interested in that aspect of it but at 50% I was just very confused about these four women and who was who and what they were doing and I was already kind of had an idea of what was going to happen as far as like who the big bad was going to be and I was not happy about it because it just didn't work for me personally so I read some reviews and felt like there were enough reviews that felt the same way I did from people who read the entire book who were like you know this aspect of um, looking into gender binary and all that is interesting however the book was not what I wanted it to be there were enough of those that I was like you know I'm just gonna walk away from this one um, and and hopefully in the future that author will write something else that I will be interested in but it just not is it's not what I was going for so my lowest rated book of the month is kind of a shocker for me at 2.25 stars we have The Hollow Boy by Jonathan Stroud. If you've been here for the past few months you may know that I have been reading the Lockwood & Co series. The Hollow Boy is book three and I did not have a good time. 2.25 is not a terrible rating as far as like okay well it's not great but when you look at like 2.5 is middle. 2.25 is not the worst rating you could have but it was not good and I'll tell you why. Okay Jonathan Stroud I'm assuming is a dude um, hence the name Jonathan. I guess Jonathan could be a woman, but I don't think so. Um, <sighs> first off, not that men can't write teenage women because, or teenage girls, I should say, because Lucy's definitely a girl, not a woman. Um, she's a badass girl, but she's a girl, not a woman. Uh, not to say that men can't write those characters because some of them do and they do it very well and I think that Lucy for the most part in books one through five because yes I have since finished the series um, I think they you know I think Lucy is a good character I think that she's written well I think she does a lot of things in book three in particular there is another female character introduced into the series and it makes Lucy the absolute worst character on page that's what Lucy became and Lucy was never that before in book three Lucy became jealous um short-tempered short-sighted if you will um just very not a good person she was just an instant hate on this new female character for absolutely no reason and it just made her not be the character that she had been in the previous two books or in the following two books. It was completely out of character for Lucy to behave that way and honestly it completely ruined my entire experience of reading the third book. Um, when I finished the third book I was like I don't know if I'm going to continue on with this series. Um, if Lucy's going to continue to be this character I don't want to read any more of this series. Um, now, as I said, spoiler, I have since read, finished the series and basically what I decided was that um, I had books four and five on 
uh, hold at the library. And so I decided that when the fourth book came through, I would make the decision whether or not I wanted to continue on based off of how I was feeling at the time. I had just finished another book when it came through and I was like, okay, let's give it a shot, give it, you know, 10 or 15%, see what Lucy's personality is like at the beginning of this fourth book. And uh, we'll talk about the fourth book later because I also read it this month. Um, but yeah, book three was a slog and I was not a happy person and just was not, was not good. It was not good. At three stars, we have The Phone Booth at the Edge of the World by Laura and my Messina. We read this as part of my local bookstores book club, Sweetberry Books. We have been reading translated fiction this year. This was set in Japan. It was written originally in Italian. It is based off of the true story of what they call the wind phone, which is a phone that is set at the base of a mountain. It is not connected to anything, but people can go there to talk to their loved ones who have passed on. Um, since the like original news story of the Japanese wind phone came out, they have set up wind phones all over the world. And this book kind of takes place at the original one in Japan. This is set after a tsunami where our main character loses her mother and her daughter and essentially her love interest who has lost his wife to a different uh, thing, I believe. But we read this book going through and learning about characters who have lost people, um, what that means to them, how they grieve, how the process works for them how the wind phone is able to help people. I think there are a lot of really good characters in this book, but I didn't enjoy the way that it was written. For me, it jumps around a lot and like you'll be getting something that like you'll have our main character whose name is Yui. We'll see her in the present day, you know, and she'll be talking about a thing that is happening right then. And then she goes to like something that happened in the past and then she'll be like, and 20 years from now, this will be the same. And I'm like, girl, you just traveled time in three paragraphs and I am fucking lost. So that really is an issue for me, as we have discussed before, if you've been here, I really struggle with books that jump around um, time-wise. I can do dual timeline as long as those timelines time lines stay linear. But when you get into books that just jump around, I get very confused. And so that did run my enjoyment of the book. It is a very, we talked about this in book club, obviously. Um, I think one of the words that was used to describe this was soft. Um, it's really just something that you can go into. There's a lot of loss and heartache and things like that. Again, there was a huge tsunami. A lot of people died. Um, there are other people that have lost people in different ways. Um, but it is just really like a very soft moving story. It's not bad in any means if you are okay with books that jump around timeline wise then you may enjoy this. Our other three star book is An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. Whew, I was reading this while I was reading Her Majesty's Royal Coven and that may be part of the reason why I was really struggling with it. Um, but I was 50% in and I honestly was considering DNFing this and ended up skim reading a lot of it to, for about a quarter of it and then finished the book and did enjoy it and that's why it has a three star because it probably would have been more like a four but I skim read and anytime I skim read if you've been here before you know um, I automatically take a point off if I skim read any a significant amount of it and so because I skim read a good portion of this I took it down a point but it is essentially a four star read I was just very bored in the middle I think it could have been shorter Definitely. I think Sabah could have <laughs> killed less people and I would have been happier. Um, you know, it's rough. It's, it's real rough. Uh, I think Sabah's job is to kill all of the people. She has lots of cups of tea with Satan and I appreciate that about her, but I was not emotionally okay with this book in general. Overall, I love the series. I love Laia and Elias and Helene. I think they are great characters. I think that they are really this essence of this world that we're in and how it's it's definitely not the world that we're in but it is a world that they're in um i think they show a good front of the three types of people who really exist in this world um and are showing us what those people could be in the future if they try a little harder yeah um this series overall follows elias and laia and helene as i said laia is a what they call a scholar who is a race of people who are essentially 
considered to be slaves or are just downtrodden on in general. Um, Elias is a marshal who is the like kind of leader of this world that we're in. Helene is also a marshal. Um, Helene and Elias are masks which are like this elite fighting force in this world and the three of them kind of cross paths while Elias and Helene are trying to graduate the academy where they are learning how to be these ruthless killers and Laya is captured and sent to the uh, leader of the academy's house to be a slave essentially what the series is about. It's about freeing people and learning about how people can learn to connect with other people. One of the things about this third book that I did not like that would have been why it would have been a four star instead of a three um, or instead of a five I should say. One of the things I did not like about this was that the villain in this fourth book is definitely not the villain that you would have expected it to be except it was because we got there, you know, as the book was go progressing, we got as the series was progressing, we got there. But our original villain, though is very important to the plot, we see very little of her and she is defeated, in my opinion, fairly easily. And I don't, I feel like there could have been more to that character. I feel like that character is a very difficult character to enjoy to read because they are a hot mess. It's like reading President Snow from the Hunger Games. Like, you enjoy some of the things that they do in your brain as far as like plot wise like this makes for a great plot but also you're like they're a terrible human and I hope they die soon and so when you have that kind of a character but they're not doing what you want them to do and then suddenly they're not that present in the book like she does some terrible things in this book but she's not very present so it's like she just pops up, does something terrible, and leaves, and then pops up and does something terrible and leaves. So you always know when she pops up something bad's gonna happen. So I wish she had been more involved in this final book. Um, I do like the way things ended up. I was very happy with the end of this book. I think that there were a lot of interesting things that took place in this book. I did enjoy it. I enjoyed this series overall. I do recommend it if you like a high fantasy set in a world that is outside of our own. With a 3.5 out of 5 stars, we have This Savage Song by... Is it B.E. Schwab or Victoria Schwab? Victoria Schwab, Madam Schwab. Uh, so this was the book that I pulled from my TBR jar for the TBR takedown last month. So I had to read this by the end of the month or unhaul it. I of course picked it up because it's Schwab. And so um, why didn't I pick it up before that? I don't know. You tell me. We'll both know. This book takes place in a world where when you create a sin, a monster is created. And the book series starts off with Kate, whose father kind of runs this half of the city where they are, um, basically, if you pay him, he gives you protection uh, from the monsters. And August, his family is on the other side of the city, and they run basically by just killing the monsters. So you have two very different worldviews. And Kate and August come upon some kind of a thing that's happening in their world where they are essentially the only ones that can save each other and so they have to join forces to try to take down the big bad of this book of this world. I did really enjoy this book as far as like the plot and uh, a lot of the things that were introduced as far as the world building but I do think that there were some pacing issues and some issues with just like ooh, not the storytelling because the storytelling was fine what did I take issue with? Jessica, use your brain. This is what happens when you read a book and it's been uh, 30 days and you're like, I don't know what I'm doing, which leads me to tell you that there may be some channel changes coming soon, but uh, that's for another day and for another nickel. I do think Kate's character was a little abrasive and kind of hard to enjoy in parts where she at the beginning very much wanted to be like her father and then as the story progressed things kind of changed and there is like this final battle and something happens and I'm very curious to see how that's going to take place in the second book. I do plan to continue on with the series. I have the second book on hold um, at the library so when it comes through I will pick that up. Uh, overall, much like Schwab's other works, I have been... I love Schwab. Like she's a fantastic human. I think she's wonderful. I think she's lovely. I want to be her best friend. However, I... <laughs> always read her books and sometimes I absolutely love them and sometimes I'm like there's just 
something missing. And this is one of the ones where I just felt like there was something missing. I don't know what that thing is. And I couldn't tell you how it could be better. But I felt like something was missing, if you know what I mean. If you're a reader, you get it. On to a book that we discussed that we will be discussing later. At 3.75 out of 5 stars, we have The Creeping Shadow by Jonathan Straub. That is the fourth book in the Lockwood & Co. series. The Creeping Shadow takes place, obviously, after book three. And our friend Lucy is a much better character in book four. Also, we are joined by a new female character named Holly. And I really like Holly. She's fun. So in book four, our group is tasked with defeating an enemy that takes them outside of London and weird things happen. I was very happy with the plot. I think the pacing was off. That's been my main problem with the series overall. Um, they do multiple cases per book and I understand that that's part of like what Shroud was going for but it just makes the pacing feel a little off because you're like in multiple different big bad scenarios and they do all kind of culminate and build up to in the fifth book like you kind of get why that is um but it does make it not quite as fun while you're reading it at least for me I could be wrong you could feel a completely different way because we all have different opinions I did like the plot of that book. I do think that it really was leading itself into the final book and I kind of knew going into like the mid of the book that it was going to be a much better read than book three. So I did enjoy it. I like our main characters. I like kind of the world that we're in where the teenagers are the ones who fight the ghosts because they're the only ones who can see them. Um, we also get a character who had been in the previous books who was previously an enemy who is now sort of a friend not necessarily let's not go full friend but sort of like a friend and I always enjoy that in character in books where someone who was previously your enemy you learn that you kind of have a common goal and you learn how to like be friends so I love that in books especially YA because it teaches teens that you know just because you think someone's an enemy doesn't necessarily mean that they are I mean sometimes they are but not always our first four star is a witch volume 13 this is Part 5, The Book of Elements, Volume 1. I know these all have ridiculous amounts of numbers on them. It's confusing. I gave this four stars. Um, this series follows five teenage girls. I think they're mid-grade age. I have a lot of problems with that aspect of this book series. But that's a whole other thing for a whole other day, essentially. No, you know what? It is a thing for today. These girls are mid-grade age. They're like in middle school. I don't think they're even in high school. I don't know. It's set in France, so who knows? It's not necessarily set in France, but the original author is French, so I'm assuming that it's set in France. It doesn't really tell us where it's set. However, the girls are like dating, and when they become the magical things that they are, like when they transform into their magical personas, they age up, and like guys are hitting on them, and I'm like, this is a little creepy, because these are like 13-year-old girls who look like they're 17, and I have a lot of... It's, it's, I'm just saying like I have concerns okay the guys have like facial hair so they're not in the same school are they in the same school maybe they are in the same school I don't know I have concerns like the guys have full-on facial hair and stuff I apparently have been filming for a half hour and my camera gave up on me uh, anywho I really don't review these anymore other than just to say I liked this one it was fun um, we're at you know volume 13 at this point so we're just gonna keep reading them I've got three more right there now we're gonna talk about a couple of Darcy Coates books uh, also at four stars these are the two novellas that I read this month Dead Lake is set at a lake imagine that a girl at a cabin I believe it's her uncle's cabin and in this woods that she's in she finds out that there have been several hikers that have gone missing over um, like the last decade and so she is there kind of just enjoying her time she's trying to paint she has a um exhibit that is due to be done soon and she is not very far along at all and so she kind of goes to this cabin that's secluded to get her painting done and what she's learning is that at night when she goes to sleep paintings are getting done that she didn't do and so the story kind of follows trying to figure out what's there doing the painting what's up with the missing people 
Um, I really enjoyed these novellas from Darcy. I like no Darcy's works. If you've been here before, you know that I've read a lot of Darcy's haunted house stories and I do really enjoy them. I've also read her Gravekeeper series, which is not technically a haunted house series. It's a haunted girl series, if we're being honest, because the main character sees ghosts. Uh, but I really enjoy Darcy's horror. They are a lot of fun. So Dead Lake was quite enjoyable. I did have a good time. And then in Ghost Camera, it is exactly what it sounds like. Our main character finds a camera that when she takes pictures, allows her to see ghosts. She shows a friend of hers. They realize that there's some weird shit going on and then they have to like find different psychics who can try to help them figure out what they're seeing and what that means and what they're going to do. Again, novella. So like, I can't tell you too much because it gives away the whole plot, but essentially they were both very good and I highly recommend anything by Darcy Coates because I've read, I don't know, like 10 of her books and I have enjoyed them all. So Darcy Coates, we stand her. Speaking of women that we stand, at a 4.25 out of 5 stars, we have The Golden Frog Games by Clarabelle A. Ortega. Uh, this was a new release. It is the sequel to my highest rated book of last year with a perfect 5.25 out of 5 stars, which was Witch Lanes. And I loved this book. It was fantastic. It was, in my opinion, not as good as the first book. Um, mostly just because there was like some weird things going on plot wise as far as our characters not really talking to one another when I feel like they could have been talking to one another. However, there is a group of raccoons who come to the aid of our main character. In, in many times and it is the most fantastic wonderful thing that you will ever read. Um, the first book Witchlings which is the one that we should be talking about is set in a world where the witches on their I believe 13th birthday are sorted into covens and these covens are where they just you know they learn what their focus is going to be and who their coven's going to be for the rest of their lives and what kind of magic they should focus on and there's always a group of spares left over because each coven only has enough room for a certain number of number of people every year they did this in order to prevent one coven from getting too much power and so the spares are left over and the spares because there is no limit on how many spares there can be at the end of a year spares are not allowed to learn the same kind of magics that everyone else is allowed to learn for fear that the spares will become too powerful and because they have that spare power or the fear of the spares having power the spares in this world are very downtrodden they are essentially um i wouldn't say slaves but i definitely would say indentured servants like it's not good for them um, the only way that they can ever really get ahead is to work for the rich families and the rich families treat them like absolute garbage and as you would expect our main character is sorted into the spare coven and she's sorted into the spare coven with a, another girl who she's never met and her arch nemesis and because of this they when they are sorted as spares they really um, kind of deny it in their hearts that they are part of the spare coven and when you deny being part of a coven um, you are you kind of lose all of your magic and their coven doesn't seal and so these girls in fear that their coven isn't going to seal they invoke the impossible task which is an impossible task it's pretty self-explanatory and their task is to have to defeat the night beast who is killing people in their town or if they fail become frogs forever. There is a fantastic quiz that you can take on Clarabelle's website that will sort you into a coven. I am Moth House, which is essentially people who like all things dead and black and gothy. And obviously, hello. So <laughs> I think it's a very accurate quiz. They did update it um, for book two that you can now also be sorted as a spare, um, which was not something that you could do before. And I retook the test and I got my Moth House again. So I feel pretty confident in my moth house sorting. I'm very happy about it actually. I love being in moth house. It is one of my favorite things. Overall I think Clarabelle does a fantastic job of, um, this is her, the third book I've read by her. I, I've also read Ghost Squad which I loved as well. Um, I think Clarabelle does a fantastic job of introducing us into worlds where things are different than what they are here and also that we can kind of see viewpoints of other people that we don't necessarily get to see in our everyday life and I really appreciate that and I like I like her storytelling so highly recommend even though I I say that I was disappointed in this book but really I loved it it just wasn't as good as the first book in my opinion but that doesn't mean I didn't like it because obviously I gave it 4.25 out of 5 stars it was fantastic and I loved it okay
Speaking of books that I loved, I also read the sequel to my favorite book of last year. I know that that sounds weird because I did, I'll, I'll link the um, book bracket and the final two books that were at the bottom of the bracket was Witchlings and All Our Hidden Gifts by Caroline O'Donoghue and I in the end decided to go with All Our Hidden Gifts even though it didn't have the same rating as Witchlings. It, you know, sometimes the highest rated book is not your favorite book and that's okay. Um, so I also read the sequel to the second book in the book bracket and that is The Gifts That Bind Us again by Caroline O'Donoghue. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It was fantastic. It was wonderful. It was everything that I hoped it would have been for a second book in what was my favorite book last year. It follows our main character Meeve who lives in Ireland. It's set in Ireland and she has in the land of things she has kind of given up on who used to be her best friend in order to be more popular and because of this the girl that she used to be friends with they don't really get along which makes sense. Meeve finds a set of tarot cards in the basement of the Catholic school that she goes to and she learns that she's able to create scarily accurate tarot readings for her classmates and Lily who is her previous best friend um, gets a tarot reading and a card comes up that they have never seen. This card is called the housekeeper and it sets forth a whole series of events that really take this group of friends on a ride. Meeve throughout the process of the book becomes friends with Fiona who is a I believe a Latinx character. I can't remember where Fiona's family is from off the top of my brain but she's not a pasty white girl in Ireland okay okay and then Ro who is Lily's brother also friends with Meeve so basically what happens is the housekeeper takes Lily the housekeeper manifests and it takes Lily and so Meeve and Ro and Fiona have to figure out how to get Lily back and that's what takes place during the first book uh, and the second book follows what happens from there on. What I will say about this book series is it sounds like it's fun and it is which is magic tarot gotta love it. Um, however there is a very serious aspect of this book that involves our main characters. Um, Ro is non-binary and there is this group of people called the Children of Brigid who essentially are like Christian nationalist Nazis uh, if you want to be honest and they are very against queer people of any sort. They create a lot of drama and a lot of problems during this book. This book deals a lot with race issues, queer issues, um, gender binary issues and honestly it was a fantastic read. So uh, the first book was great, my favorite book of last year. This book also great very excited to hopefully soon get to the third book. I do have the audiobook pre-ordered so when that comes through I'll be picking that up. And the final book that we're going to talk about this month has the word final in the title at also 4.5 out of 5 stars. It is The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. This is the first book in the Mistborn trilogy. I loved this. So I still think right now if I'm looking at just this first book and Elantris, I think I liked Elantris more. Just looking at that. Okay. Um, probably because Elantris is a complete story. This was not, I mean it was a complete story. We kind of, there was an ending and I did enjoy it. So one of the things on the back of this book that I really liked is it says, what if the prophesied hero had failed to defeat the Dark Lord? The answer will be found in the Mistborn trilogy, a saga of surprises that begins here. This book follows two main characters. One is Vin who is a young girl who is part of a thieving crew. She is Ska which means she is part of the race of people who are not really considered people in this world at all. They are slaves. Ska are considered to be absolutely nothing. They are the dirt on your shoe, the gum in your hair, the gum on your shoe. Anyway they're treated poorly. And our other main character is Kelsier who is Asha Scott Asha Asha for 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 Our other main character is Kelsier who is also Ska and he is a mistborn and essentially in this world there are people who are considered allomancers and it means that they are able to take in metal and their powers are based off of that metal. And a mistborn is someone who is able to use all metals. Allomancers are essentially able to either use one of the metals or all. There's no like weird combinations of two. You just you have one 
where you have them all. And Kelsier happens to have them all. He discovers Vin while doing, I think, a raid on... Uh, essentially, he discovers Vin at some point, and he takes Vin under his wing to kind of help him get to his end goal, which is to overthrow the Lord Ruler, who is the royal of, you know, the leader of all of the people, the rich people. And uh, yeah, that's the thing. If you've been on booktube before, you've probably heard a bajillion people talk about this book. You've heard a bajillion people talk about Brandon Sanderson. Why is it that these books that are this thick seem so short? Why is that? I don't know. I enjoy it. Um, I don't know how he's able to do the things that he's able to do. I'm jealous. As a writer, I am jealous, essentially. I did enjoy this book. I loved the characters. I loved the world building. I even loved the pacing. Like everything was fine. It was it was like uh, there was very little wrong with this book in general. Um, I did struggle with some of the like choices that were made, but they weren't bad. They just weren't necessarily the choices that I would have made. But I didn't write the book. Brando Sando did. So, you know, it's fine. So these are some of the books that I read this month. If you want to see my full reviews of those, they will be linked in the description box down below. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, you know that you can find me down in the comments. If you made it this far in the video or you're not feeling chatty, please leave me a crystal ball emoji down below so that I know that you're here. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content. I can't get my finger to work quite the way I want it to. Uh, a couple times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!